All right, so let's begin with our fourth lesson, which is shading. So what is shading? Shading is the process of using color maps projected on 3D objects in order to create physically accurate materials. So in this tutorial, we'll be covering the PBR workflow. So what is PBR? PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering. Some of the maps include base color, also referred to as albedo, ambient occlusion, metallicness, roughness, normal, and displacement. So here we'll be understanding the functions of specific maps and how textures affect the overall look of the material. So let's begin. So right here, as you can see, I have the basic loadout in Blender. Now let's go to the shading tab and let's start breaking down what we see right here. So in the left side, I can find the folder structure of my computer. And by simply searching right here, I can go to the folder where I have my materials. Right here in the center, I have the viewport and already you can see that I have some basic lighting. That's because if I click on the material preview, Blender already has some HDRs in here. So if I click on each and every one of these spheres, you can see how it affects the lightning of my cube. Now, if I go here to the strength, I can increase the strength of the HDR as well as the blur on how much I want my HDR visible in my scene. Right down here, if I click on slot one, I have the one material already assigned to my cube. And if I click on base color, I can change my, the color of my cube. Now, if you want to assign multiple materials, just simply press on slot one and click on the plus. If you want to remove any additional materials, just press on the minus. Now, if you want to duplicate the same material that you already have, simply press on the stacking icons, which means the new material. And already you can see that it changed the name of the material. To rename a material, double click here and you can rename the material to whatever you want. Now, right here, if I click on the material properties, already you can see that I have the same information as here. That's because once you open Blender, it comes with a principated BDCF shader where you can connect all of these different maps. So already you can see that we have tons of information. So let's start breaking down how to use all of them by simply creating our first shader. So already before we continue, I just want you to go to CCO textures and right here, just type in on brick, download any one of these materials before we continue and then we can begin. So once you have them downloaded, let's create our first material. So I'll click on new. I'll rename this one to be brick. Now, right here, I have the folder where I have downloaded one of the materials from that side. And by simply clicking and dragging into the node graph, already you can see that I have imported my texture map. So how can I connect it? Well, already you can see that I have the color output with yellow and the base color with yellow. So that means I need to connect those two. So you can see that I already have that information on my cube. So let's continue. Let's add the roughness map. And if I zoom in here, you can see that the roughness color is gray. So that means that I need to connect the gray output from my image texture. So like so. Now let's bring in the normal map and the displacement map. Now, if I connect the normal map right now, you can see that it affects the color of my object. So I don't want that to happen. So I need to plug in a normal map output to this. So if I type in normal, already you can see that if I click on the normal map and just connect it, it already affected the look of my object. And now by simply increasing the strength, I can see the result affecting from the normal map. So what happens with the displacement map? Right now, I cannot see it right here in the output. So there are two ways to connect the displacement map. You can connect it right here in the material output by simply bringing it in and dragging it and dropping it like this. And if you connect color to displacement, nothing happens. So we need to press Shift A again and type in vector displacement. However, if I do something right here, you cannot see the information that we want. That's because if I now go to change the render engine to cycles, and if I click on render preview, you can see how that it affects my look of the object. So let's go back to the shading. And now I'm going to detach it from this menu right here. 
and I'm gonna bring it right here. So how can I connect the normal map and the displacement map together? So let me disconnect this two first. And now if I bring them in, I'll just add a new uh, node, which is bump. And right here, you can see that I have outputs for height and normal. So first off, let's connect the height. So color to normal and normal to normal. Now here I can change the strength as well. However, I need to connect the height map with the displacement map. So let's bring the color to height. And right now you can see that if I increase the distance again, you can see how it affects my material. So now that we have a basic understanding of how you can connect textures to our nodes, let's begin shading our meshes.